Hello, I'm Tony Asher. I'm a neurosurgeon in Charlotte, North Carolina, and it's my privilege to participate in the symposium today. I'll be talking about using clinical registries to drive spine care quality, and I'd like to do that in the context of an overview of our national data initiatives over the last decade. From 2010 to 2012, we created and then launched the Quality and Outcomes Database, or QOD. The QOD is a national clinical registry program developed in cooperation with numerous value care stakeholders. And it's the product of a comprehensive strategy driven largely by the American Association of Neurological Surgeons to create novel shared information systems focused on assessing clinical outcomes as a primary method to support value-based and sustainable care initiatives. We began the program with a focus on spine surgery. We did that because spine surgery makes up the majority of neurosurgical practice. It was also the case that at the time of the initiation of this program, the value of spine surgery was being questioned by a variety of national stakeholders. The objectives of the QOD are to analyze 30-day surgical morbidity and three-month, one-year, and at times two-year outcomes after common spine procedures. Unique features of the QOD are the longitudinal capture of observed and patient reported outcomes or PROs. The former feature allows for evaluation of the sustainability of treatment effects. The latter feature allows for the capture of outcomes that may actually be more reflective of patient experience than caregiver observations. If we look at a snapshot of the QOD in December of 2019, when this program was converted to the American Spine Registry, which I'll discuss near the end of this lecture. There were 120 contracted sites around the country, 1,300 surgeons and over 300 hospitals and care centers were represented, roughly split between academic and private practice sites. We felt that this split allowed us to achieve a very nice representative patient sampling across the country. Again, there were over 100,000 patients that were enrolled in the registry last December. If I were to look at our major observations over the first several years of the program, I would divide them into these two categories. First, patients in the aggregate start with high levels of disability and subsequently experience significant and persistent improvements in pain, performance, and quality of life following spine surgery. These particular observations have supported efficacy and safety of care claims related to average responses to spine procedures. And so, they help us address population level questions. For example, is this procedure generally safe and effective? For most procedures and in most conditions, the answer is yes. However, significant variability exists in treatment responses at the individual patient level. The scatter plots below show baseline versus 12 month disability scores in individual patients undergoing surgical therapies for various pathologies. Each dot represents an individual patient with red dots representing treatment failure and green dots representing achievement of MCID. Even a casual observation of these plots reveals that while the majority of patients, the average if you will, have a favorable response, the magnitude of that response even at similar baseline ODI levels, varies widely from patient to patient. Understanding the drivers of individual patient responses to surgical therapy has therefore been the primary focus of our analytical efforts to date, and that's mostly because those in analyses have important implications for care enhancements related to patient optimization, informed decision making, and focus quality improvement. So we've seen that significant value can be derived through analyses of the combined contribution of patient and other variables to specific outcomes, what we've termed our, value, our variation to value initiatives. And those initiatives can be roughly grouped in the following categories, the development of risk adjusted benchmarks of group and provider performance to identify specific improvement opportunities, outcome prediction tools to help prevent ineffective care, and then numerous quality science programs that have been able to advance our common knowledge base regarding spine care interventions. And uh, these are just a, a few areas of, of acuity research uh, that I'll, I'll mention today. We've obviously had uh, numerous manuscripts related to our experience, and I invite you to um, uh, investigate the uh, literature related to acuity as there are a lot of interesting observations about ways to optimize patient care. So if we look at our 
initial data experience from 2010 to 2020. We have in summary developed a toolkit to navigate a patient-centered value-based healthcare system. We've specifically built a novel national cooperative data system and fostered a quality culture. And this is really through the largest collaborative data effort in our specialty to date. We've disseminated quality tools and techniques nationally. We develop credibility among important stakeholders. We certainly have identified gaps in our collective knowledge, which have helped to inform further research and education. And we've used registry data for a variety of purposes, advanced quality improvement, public reporting, patient negotiations, uh, value-based contracting, and in particular the development of advanced payment models has been a focus recently. Research and evidence-based decision support, again, have been important parts of our efforts. I'd like to uh, finish by talking about a few important collaborative efforts we've been involved in over the last few years. The first is the Institute for Healthcare Improvement NeuroPoint Alliance collaboration, which occurred in 2016 to 17. The goal of this collaborative was to facilitate the direct application of registry data to processes of continuous QI. And this project really grew out of, of a realization that data collection and analysis and applied quality improvement were two distinct competencies. With the recognition of that, we developed advanced partnerships with the IHI, Intermountain Healthcare, and several QED sites. We obtained a grant from NRAF, and mostly with the help of IHI, we were able to develop a toolkit to allow for a continuous cycle of quality data collection, analysis, and then application to clinical care, which we described in a recent manuscript, which I invite you to look up. The next collaborative I would like to mention is our partnership with the American Board of Neurological Surgery, which occurred uh, in roughly 2016 to 2018, but uh, in 2018, we were able to produce this joint product that we have called the Practice and Outcomes of Surgical Therapies, or POST. We, again, applied lessons learned from the QED and the development of an integrated clinical data platform that now supports the AVNS primary certification and MOC processes. Specific advances that we included in this product to promote the gathering of high quality and representative patient data our methods for uh, the consecutive collection and auditing of cases, which we believe uh, allows us to look at more representative and accurate data, the inclusion of all neurosurgical subspecialty areas, not just spine, more precise methods of diagnostic definition, which can facilitate comparative outcomes analyses, and the inclusion of imaging data, which allows for advanced insights into decision-making and care appropriateness. And I'll show you an example of this. Uh, this is, again, uh, a, a, a sample screen. Um, it's data that a board examiner might have available to them uh, when they're looking at an individual candidate's performance. In addition to discrete data fields with patient characteristics and outcomes, we now allow for the analysis of imaging information, at least when appropriate, which, again, uh, we believe can lead to important insights regarding clinical decision making that can sometimes be difficult to uh, ascertained from a simple review of text fields only. And we've now started incorporating imaging data uh, into our other national registry programs to enhance the value of those efforts. Finally, I'd like to talk about the American Spine Registry Project, which was launched last year. The American Spine Registry is an unprecedented collaborative effort between the American Association of Neurological Surgeons and the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. It's jointly owned and developed by these two organizations, which represent virtually all North American spine surgeons. And it's our sincere hope this program will serve as a model for cross-disciplinary clinical data projects going forward. We have opened up our lumbar and cervical spine degenerative uh, modules and we are now developing a spine tumor module and spine deformity modules. The goal of the ASR, simply put, is to affect widespread improvements in spine care through the creation of cross-disciplinary synergies and mostly in the following areas. Uh, we want to more rapidly scale our national quality science programs. We want to improve data collection efficiencies. We want to use our combined influence to promote key stakeholder partnerships, and we've already done this very significantly with the joint commission in the development of an advanced recognition program for spine care surgery. We're addressing various value opportunities through the routine combination of clinical and economic data, particularly combining outcomes data 
with Medicare claims data, and we're expanding and enhancing our existing spine care quality science collaboratives. So finally, I just would like to uh, talk about what we believe is perhaps preventing more significant progress and lessons learned over the last 10 years include the following. Diagnostic fidelity is difficult to achieve in spine care. There's just so much heterogeneity and we are developing better methods of, if you will, comparing apples to apples, which is important for us to be able to compare relative patient experience in various parts of the country. It's difficult to, to ensure representative data submission, which is why we're now going to continuous data capture. Surgical appropriateness remains difficult to assess, which is why we're incorporating other forms of data, such as imaging information. Data doesn't necessarily translate into quality improvement. We talked about that, and so we're trying to bridge the gap between continuous quality improvement processes and data collection and analysis. The sustain, sustainability and scaling of longitudinal projects remains a challenge. It's, it's expensive and we're trying to use advanced technologies to en enhance uh, that capability. Different users have different needs and resource considerations. And so we're trying to develop a, a menu of different um, uh, opportunities for individuals to participate in these programs. And then finally, there's a need for greater stakeholder involvement across disciplinary collaboration. And we think the collaboration and these various, uh, various alliances will improve the value and importance of these programs going forward. So I thank you for your attention today. Again, it was a real privilege to participate.